In this video, we're going to take a look at Unit 7, Lesson 5, Practice Problems. In number one, Noah says, I constructed two perpendicular bisectors of triangle ABC. That means that the point where they intersect is the circumcenter. And Andre responds, no, we still need to check the third perpendicular bisector to make sure it intersects at the same point. Do you agree with either of them? Show or explain your reasoning. So, um, Certainly the circumcenter is where all three perpendicular bisectors cross, but you don't have to find all three because lines, when they cross, there's only one way for them to cross. There's only one point. So if you've drawn two of them, you know this is the point where the third one has to go through in order um, for them all to cross at the same point. If this one went over here, okay, it's not crossing at the same point. So you really only have to do two. The third one is just making sure that the other um, two were done correctly. The dotted line um, is the perpendicular bisector of side AB. The distance between E and A is seven units. So from here to here is seven units. What is the distance between E and B? So if something is, if a point is on the perpendicular bisector, that means that it's equidistant from the end points of the segment that it is bisecting. So for this one, the end points are A and B. So E is the same distance from A as it is from B. So the answer to this one is going to be seven. Number three, construct the circumcenter of each triangle, then based on the locations of the circumcenter, classify it as acute, right, or obtuse. So remember that we learned that the circumcenters in an acute triangle intersect inside the triangle, a right triangle intersect on the triangle, and an obtuse triangle intersect outside of the circle. Um, so let's go ahead and construct some perpendicular bisectors here. So I personally just like to open my compass to wider than halfway of the longest segment and then just draw the circles around all three points, keeping the compass the same size. So I'm just not going to change my compass size and I'm just going to draw it around all three vertices. That way I've got the intersections of all of them that I can just connect. So now I can put in the perpendicular bisectors here. And again, you don't have to do all three like we just talked about. You could just do two. Um, so I see that this top triangle and bottom triangle intersect here. And actually, let me get you some colors so you can kind of see um, what I'm talking about here. So here's one triangle, or sorry, one circle. And then um, here's another one. Let's do orange. Um, and then this one. So when we're looking at the intersection of the red and the orange, we can see that they cross there. So that's going to give us a perpendicular bisector. And then we can cross the blue and the orange will give us the perpendicular bisector. So then we can see the circumcenter right there. We don't have to draw in the third one if we don't want to, um, but there would be your perpendicular bisector. You again, or sorry, your circumcenter. You certainly could draw these in and see that they also cross there. And then these ones are crossing on the, the triangle. So this one is a right triangle. So we could do the same idea here. Um, so I'm just going to whoops, make sure that I have my compass open to more than halfway so that my circles will cross. Um, I'm just going to change the colors here so that we can see the different circles. So we'll draw this one. Okay, then I'll move over here. And change colors again. Draw that one. 
and then I'll draw it from the third vertex. And then I can connect these with um, the perpendicular bisectors. I'm just going to do black for those. All right, so we'll just go through. So the navy and the pink, pink circles connected there. Um, pink and blue connected here. So then this gives us our circumcenter. And it, that one is inside of the circle, or sorry, inside of the triangle. So this is going to be an acute triangle. Select all the quadrilateral quadrilaterals that cannot be cyclic. Um, so remember, cyclic means that opposite angles add up to 180. So we want to find ones that don't. So in A, we have a square. And we know that a square, and we don't really care about the side lengths. All we're looking at is these angles. And so the angles are all 90. So the ones across from each other, 90 plus 90 is definitely going to be 180. And then 90 plus 90 is going to be 180. So this one is is cyclic. Okay, and we want the ones that cannot be cyclic. So this one is cyclic. So we're going to cross it off. B is a rectangle. And a rectangle is very similar to a square in these regards because we're just looking at the angles. And a rectangle has all 90 degree angles. So again, these ones are going to be 180 together. And these ones are going to be 180 together. So a rectangle is cyclic. A rhombus with side lengths of five centimeters and angles measuring at 20 and 160. So a rhombus kind of looks like this, like a diamond, okay? The angles across from each other are the same. So if this one is 20, this one is 20. Well, 20 plus 20 definitely does not equal 180. So this one is not cyclic. So that's what we're looking for. Um, a, B, C, D. So we're going to look at A and C. So A and C, add those together, that's 180. B and D, so 97 and 83, that's 180, so this one is cyclic. Same idea in this next one, W and Y, because they're not next to each other, so W is 45, Y is 90, that does not equal up to 180, so this one is not cyclic, which is what we're looking for. Number five, now we're looking for a cyclic quadrilateral. So now we're looking for the ones that do total 180. So let's take a look at A and C versus B and D. So those opposite angles. Um, and we could draw the quadrilateral so you could see that. Okay, so you can just go A, B, C, D. So A and C are across from each other. B and D are across from each other. So A is 70. C is 70, 70 plus 70 does not equal 180, so this is not cyclic. And we are looking for cyclic this time. A is 60, C is 120, that's 180. 50 and 130 is 180, so this one is cyclic. 100 um, with a 70 does not equal 180. So this one is not cyclic. Last one, 70 and 110 is 180. 45 and 45 is not 180. So this one is not cyclic. Number six, find the measure of angle um, Z, X, or sorry, Y, X, Z. So we've got a tangent to the circle. So this is a 90 degree angle. So then we know the two angles in a right triangle, the two acute angles total 90. So we will just subtract 52 from 90 um, to get 38. You can also just subtract both from 180. So you could do 180 minus 90 minus 52 as well and have gotten 38. Number seven, find the measure of angle AOB. or sorry, AOB is given to you. So AOB is 56. Um, what is the measure of ACB? Okay, so AOB is a central angle. 
ACB is an inscribed angle. They both intercept the same arc. So they're both crossing, starting and stopping at A and B. So they share the same arc. So remember um, that a central angle is the same as the arc. So this arc is 56. And the inscribed angle is half the arc. So when we get to ACB, that's going to be 56 divided by 2, which is 28. And then what is the measure of the arc from A to B, not through C? So that's going to be that 56. And then number eight, a quadrilateral has these vertices. Select the most precise classification for the quadrilateral. So a couple different ways to do this. One is to graph it. So I'm going to graph it. All right, so let's put these points on here. So we've got the point um, 0, 0 for A, 2, 4 for B, 0, 5 for C, and negative 2, 1 for D. And then we can connect these to take a look at them. So when we're classifying, one of the big things that we want to look at are the slopes so we can decide um, if we have a parallelogram, meaning opposite sides are parallel, and if we have 90 degree angles because we have opposite reciprocal slopes. So let's take a look here and count the rise is 4, the run is 2 here. So the slope of this line is 4 divided by 2, which is 2. can draw a little slope triangle over here as well, and we see that we have another 4, 2. So rise is 4, run is 2, so slope is 2. Um, on this one, okay, we've got a 1 and a 2, so the rise is 1, the run is 2, and this one is going down, so your slope is negative 1 half here. And then a similar thing here, we've got a 1 and a 2, so rise is 1, run is 2, and this line is going down, so it's going to be a negative 1 half. So definitely have opposite sides with the same slope. So we do not just have a quadrilateral. We, in the, at the minimum, have a parallelogram. So let's check if we've got right angles. So one of our slopes is negative 1 half. The other slope is 2. These are opposite reciprocals of each other, okay, which means that we have 90 degree angles, okay? So we definitely have either a rectangle or a square. Um, if it's a square, then these slope triangles would be identical, and we can see that these green and blue triangles are not the same. So these side lengths are going to be different, so we just have a rectangle.